Welcome to lecture number six of this computer vision class. In the last lecture, we've introduced, motivated by the ambiguities in the stereo matching problem, we've introduced graphical models and a particular inference algorithm called belief propagation that allows us to compute maximum a posteriori solutions or map solutions and also marginals. Now, in this lecture, we're going to discuss some applications of graphical models to computer vision problems. In the first unit, we're going to discuss the dense stereo reconstruction problem that we already know using Markov random fields, in particular, um, performing maximum a posteriori inference in Markov random fields with discrete variables. So using the max product algorithm that we learned about in the last lecture. In unit number two, we're going to discuss applications in terms of dense multi-view stereo reconstruction, which is stereo reconstruction, but not from two views, but from more than two views in the context of the sum product algorithm for inferring marginals and probabilistic results. And then in the final unit, we're going to discuss the optical flow estimation problem, which like the stereo, the binocular stereo estimation problem is a estimation problem in the 2D image plane. But because the optical flow problem is typically formulated using continuous variables, we're going to use the gradient descent algorithm to do inference in to do maximum a posteriori inference in the corresponding graphical model. Let's start with stereo reconstruction. This is a slide that I have already shown twice, but let's just remember again, what are the difficulties in local stereo matching or block matching? Well, there's a lot of ambiguities arising due to, for example, textless surfaces that match too many textless surfaces in the other image, repetitions in the image, occlusions, as well as non lambertian surfaces. And in order to overcome these ambiguities, we'd like to incorporate some prior knowledge about the real world statistics. And we have seen that such statistics can be derived, for example, from data sets such as the Brown range image data set that provides a large number of depth maps from which we can compute statistics like this. And we have concluded that we have concluded from these statistics that depth very slowly accept at object discontinuities, which however are sparse. So in most areas of the depth map, we have a very smooth transition, very small changes in depth, but then at the object boundaries, we have a large transition. We jump over a large range of disparities in order to go to the next pixel. And this reflects in this Statistics here, we have a lot of probability mass centered around zero. This is the gradient of the range. But we have also some probability um, in the tails, the so-called tails of this distribution away from zero. Now we want to incorporate such statistics into the model, at least approximately. And we can do this using a Markov random field on a grid. Graph. Here we see a four connected grid structured graph. This is corresponding to a three by three pixel image. Of course, if we apply this algorithm to a real image, this will be a much larger graph, but the structure will look the same. Here in this graph, every circle corresponds to a variable. So every circle corresponds to a pixel and the variable is the disparity that we want to infer for that pixel. And then we have unary factors. These are the squares that are connected to only a single variable. And these are the matching costs that we can compute using a um, block matching technique, for example, or a Siamese network. But then we also incorporate our prior knowledge about the smoothness of disparity maps into this Markov random field. And we do this by adding um, pairwise connections in this factor graph here, pairwise um, potentials that connect to neighboring sites. 
So this is a very simple graphical model. It can be formulated as a, as a standard undirected Markov uh, network or Markov random field, but it can also be formulated easily as a factor graph as done here. So we have unary factors and pairwise factors. And this is reflected in this formula here. So what we want to do is we want to solve for the entire disparity map now, not just for the disparity at a single pixel, but for the entire disparity map. So we model a distribution over the space of all disparity maps. Capital bold D is a disparity map that's in the case of a VGA image that is a 640 by 480 dimensional matrix. And now we want to model the probability distribution over the space of all these matrices. And this probability is proportional to this factorization into unary factors and pairwise factors where this tilde here denotes adjacent sites. For example, this pixel and this pixel are adjacent in this graph structure that we have defined. The unary factors are the data terms that are determined by our local matching cost and that depend only on a single variable. And the pairwise factors are the smoothness factors or the prior constraints about the smoothness of the disparity maps that we want to in integrate into this problem. And they depend on two adjacent disparity variables or random variables. Now we can convert this formulation uh, into another representation that is the so-called Gibbs energy. And we haven't done any change here, except that we have replaced the unary and pairwise factors through corresponding negative log factors. In the previous lecture, we have used just the log factors, but here we're using the negative log factors now um, so that we can interpret this as an energy. And we want to minimize an energy which is equivalent to maximizing the probability over this disparity map. So we have a equivalence through this Gibbs distribution of maximizing a distribution and minimizing an energy. This energy is an energy over the disparity map as well. Yes, so Psi data is the negative log of F data and Psi smooth is the negative log of F smooth and in order for these to be the same, we have, of course, to add the minus here, which means that minimizing this energy corresponds to maximizing the probability of D. This is the equation from the previous slide. Just to recap, we have I tilde J denoting neighboring pixels on a four connected grid, and we have unary terms, which are the matching cost and by formulating this as an energy formulation, we can directly take, for instance, the sum of square distance here as the matching cost, where lower is better. And uh, we have pairwise terms here that encourage smoothness between adjacent pixels. Um, for example, we have a very simple term here that simply says, well, if the disparity of adjacent sites or pixels is not the same, then I add a penalty. And if it's the same, um, I add zero, no penalty. But uh, we can also model something like the truncated L1 penalty, which is L1 distance truncated with such a truncation threshold here that's coming already much closer to the distributions that we've seen on the previous slide. And that basically says, well, um, up to a certain threshold, I want to penalize to adjacent sites if the disparity is different and I want to penalize proportional to the difference in the disparity. And of course, lower is better. The lower lowest energy value would be obtained in terms of the smoothness or pairwise terms by just having a constant disparity map where all the Ds are the same. Um, but of course, in that case, the matching cost would be high because unless this would be really a scene where we have a, a, we are looking at a plane where this actually holds, 
we would violate the matching cost. So now by solving this MRF, we are trading off the unary term and the pairwise term. And this trade-off is controlled by this parameter lambda that we have introduced, which is the regularization strength or weight and it controls the strength of the smoothness prior. If we set lambda to zero, then we are only optimizing this term here and we fall back to the standard block matching algorithm. The winner takes all solution. And if we increase this lambda, then we obtain smoother and smoother solutions. But of course, if we increase it too much, then we will obtain solutions that are too smooth. Then we are weighing these this prior knowledge about um, the, the smoothness too high. So we can solve now this MRF using, for example, the belief propagation, the max product belief propagation algorithm that we have discussed in the last lecture in order to obtain a maximum of a story solution, which corresponds to the most likely disparity map, at least approximately, it's an approximate algorithm. We obtain the most likely disparity map under this model. And there's other algorithms that have been used like graph cuts, um, which we don't have time to go into detail here, but which also do, which also provides provide a, a solution to this map problem, which also minimize this energy. And now here's a result for the scene that we are already familiar with, the Middlebury cones scene. And you can see how the inference result using such an MRF are much improved with respect to just a local block matching algorithm. And that's also the reason why, for example, in the paper of Spontar and LeCun on Siamese stereo matching, this local Siamese matching costs that are computed by a deep network, um, are complemented with a with inference in a Markov random field in order to overcome um, ambiguities and to further improve on the estimation result of this local matching cost winner take all solution. Now this was a very simple Markov random field. We can also think about more or factor graph. We can also think about more complicated graphical models that incorporate even more constraints about the world um, that integrate non-local prior knowledge. And here's an example of this. This is the energy formulation from before, just using slightly different notation where we have an energy over the disparity maps. This is the Gibbs energy that is composed of an appearance or a data term and a smoothness term. And if we do this, then we get a result like this for that particular scene. And the reason is that despite we have introduced the smoothness regularizer um, due to the very strong violation of the matching assumption, this very local pairwise term cannot deal with such strong violations of our assumptions, like in the case of these reflections here, where you can see this scattered result. And so we need stronger assumptions. We need to integrate stronger assumptions into this problem. And what we had done in this paper here at CVPR 2015 is to not only think about the scene in terms of per pixel depth for disparities, but also in terms of the objects that are present in the scene and because for street scenes like this, there's a lot of cars, for example, and we know what the shape of cars roughly looks like. We can try to infer not only the disparity map, but also the objects here, O, jointly. And so there's two additional terms added here. There is a semantics term that tries to make the, the semantics of these inferred objects similar to semantics that have been inferred from the image. And then there's a consistency term that tries to make the 3D objects that have been inferred consistent with the disparity map. And now by integrating this object level prior knowledge, we can further regularize the problem and we, we can get a solution like this here. You can see it's not perfect, 
particularly at the boundaries, but these gross outliers at the reflections have been now taken into account by this, um, by this object level knowledge. And so here are some results. On the left, you can see the result of the baseline method, the Siamese stereo net matching network from Sponter et al. And on the right, you can see the result when regularizing at the object level. And all of these results that you can see here, these point clouds, these color point clouds are inferred from just two images. Okay, in summary, block matching easily suffers from these matching ambiguities that we've talked about before. And choosing the window size is really problematic due to this trade-off that we've discussed in lecture number four. And what we can do is we can integrate smoothness constraints that resolve some of these ambiguities and allow for choosing smaller windows by integrating the smoothness constraints using these graphical models, we can then choose smaller windows and instead increase the smoothness parameter, which reduces the bleeding artifacts. And this can be formulated as map inference in a discrete MRF. All the results that I've shown on the previous slides have been inferred using the max product algorithm. So this map solution can be obtained using this max product algorithm, the belief propagation algorithm or graph cuts or any other algorithm out of our toolbox of inference algorithms in discrete graphical models. And we've seen that integrating recognition cues like detecting objects and trying to infer objects jointly with the disparity map can further regularize the problem and help overcoming very strong ambiguities.